And then the next path that I was on was I felt after I rested, I felt very grounded in a way that wasn't just this normal feeling settled in a way that you would normally feel after you've gone through a time in your life where you kind of felt like you had figured a lot of stuff out. Mm -hmm. It was such a deeper sense of being in a state of being that would allow me to um, begin to know where my life was actually taking me. So it was very profound. And what I noticed was that the energy here was the feet, and there were these beautiful rays of light that I saw shining down into the earth. But also, what I didn't see coming was that grounding for me, and what I write about in the book, is more than just down to the earth. It's actually up to the heavens as well, into God consciousness, unity consciousness. So there's this upward grounding and downward grounding, and your whole body is just surging with this loving energy from head to toe infused in every cell of your body. And this was a profound path for me. And it made me literally be able to feel like I was like uh, had a superpower. It made me feel empowered, finally, because I'd lost my power. For so long, I lost my power. So the next path after that, that I realized was with this energy, with this enthusiasm, with this health, mind and body, I was healthy again, enough to be able to dream again for myself. I had lost my dreams. I was helping everybody else with their dreams. How many times have you been helping everybody, your partner, people at work, your kids, your friends? You are the one nurturing everybody and helping everybody live out their dreams. This was the path that I knew I had to bring all of that wisdom and nurturing and love inward for myself. And that felt very foreign to me, which I think it does for a lot of people, especially women. Especially, I was going to say, and it feels so wrong, like naughty almost, like, oh, I should be doing that. We get that so often from individuals. I want to, but, but I shouldn't. It feels wrong because we've been taught that it's wrong. You should do it for everyone else, not for yourself. If you do it for yourself, you're self-centered. You're egotistical. You're narcissistic. So how do you move through that in this path? There comes a point where you become unwilling to live like you lived before. It's like I personally crossed a bridge and the bridge just collapsed behind me and I was unwilling and literally couldn't go back to the life I'd lived before, which was everything that you just described, that it's not okay for, for especially a mother to spend any time on herself, that all of your energy must go to your children. But it's as simple as, you know, when you're on an airplane and they say, put your face mask on first and then put your children's face mask on. It's just as simple as that. You yeah. need to give yourself oxygen to breathe again. We forget that we need to breathe in this world that's so loud and so noisy. This is where I was able to breathe and to tune in and be able to imagine that my life mattered 
And if I was, if my kids were going to be their best, then they needed to see me at my best. Kids are great imitators, but they need something great to imitate. And I made a decision that my dreams were going to be so big because I wanted them to dream big too. Good for you. And that's it. If we don't have any gas in the tank, how can we do anything for anyone? 